how we do this, we are the truest, got these fangs super sharp, your shit toothless, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish, in the graveyard, acting foolish, finna dance with the devil to no music, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish. Uh, I forgot how to introduce my podcast. It's called Ghoulish with me, Max Booth, an undead host. Welcome to the show. On today's episode, I am talking to Rebecca Jones Howell about dead shopping malls, abandoned shopping centers, because she has a short story in my new anthology, Lost Contact called Model and Ruins, which is about about this really topic. It's a fun episode, fun topic. We uh, we talk about a little experience with the uh, shopping malls back when they were more popular. We talk about those videos you can find on YouTube of people uh, exploring abandoned malls. Pretty uh, fascinating stuff. This might also be one of the only ghoulish episodes I've recruited while Blackout, dr- while well, just extremely drunk. I usually don't drink while doing podcasts because I think it might be unprofessional. But uh, I don't, I don't recall the context of this one specifically. We recorded this back in August. I'm only just now uh, getting down to editing and uploading it. But yeah, if you ever wanted to listen to an episode of Ghoulish with the host being drunk. Not, this is it. This is the one. This is the um, <laughs> the Dead Shopping Mall drunk episode of Ghoulish. Please go by, I lost contact, and um, have a spooky day. Have a spooky holiday. Thank you for all the support you've given this year. Um, I don't know, maybe leave a review of the podcast on iTunes if you like it. Tell a friend to listen to it. That's all I got. Let's um let's just go ahead and listen to this episode and have a good spooky time. All right. Hey, what's up? Not much. How are you? I'm okay. I'll just I was watching some videos on YouTube of people breaking in the, into shopping malls. That was cool. Oh. <laughs> Which ones were you watching? Yeah, I was. I watched, uh, like, I skipped around two of them because I, despite you talking about, like, this specific thing in the story you wrote, like, I know the dude, like, watches videos of people doing this. I, yeah. It didn't, like, connect with me that this was a real thing until, like, 20 <laughs> minutes ago. I was like, I'm going to type this in. And sure enough, it's like this huge thing that I just didn't know about. And one, oh, it's a major subculture. <laughs> one, one I watched was like these dudes breaking into a, a, a an abandoned mall that's in the Bangkok, Thailand, and like. The, oh, okay. The, do you know anything about this one? No. Was it the proper people? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, they're like they're like my one of my favorite like urbex people like duo. So <laughs> it's possible. Um, so I guess this mall is famous because when it was made, uh, I don't know, decades ago, I don't know time, but when it was made, uh, they, they, they built it wrong or something. And so they had like extra, uh, space on the, like the, the bottom two or three floors of the shopping mall that they had nothing in. And also it had an opening in the beginning, in the, in the, in the top, like it had no ceiling. So it, whenever it would rain, it would just build up and up and it would attract all these insects and shit. So to like fight away like this unwanted uh these unwanted insects and the uh, pilocytes they brought in oh, all that's the one with the fish right yes the fish yeah, yeah. <laughs> they brought in all these fish and it looks so cool but they break in and they like they sneak in through the little openings and the cross spaces and they get to the basement 
and all the waddles just gone and they're just so disappointed but they do find like this one like pocket of waddle that hasn't uh, evaporated yet and they'll still fish in it and they'll like oh wow and they will like how the hell have these fish survived without any food or anything and like if that was a hula movie that would be the time the fish would like jump out and eat those guys yeah because they would have had to like evolve to like eat different shit right <laughs> i think that's what fish do i don't know a lot about fish I don't either, but I feel like, you know, you're stuck in this, like, single environment. Like, you gotta learn how to eat other things. There's no more bugs. Yeah. I mean, I I have had fish as a child, but I don't know what happened to them. I I assume they died? Have you had fish? I had a bed of fish. I had two. And they they both died, because I don't think I, I don't think I took good care of them. But... <laughs> I I love the the phrase beta fish because it sounds like something some dude in college would call like an idiot, like someone they think is lower than them. Like look at that beta fish. <laughs> yeah, it's so like demeaning to call a fish that. I think I don't really know what it means though. <laughs> it's like a Greek fish. I don't know. Okay. But they like fight each other, don't they? Like, do they? Is that is that a thing? Do fish fight? Yeah, that was supposed to be the whole thing. Like, they fight each other or something. Oh, sh- that's pretty. And that's why they have to keep the males in like separate, like little tiny <laughs> tanks that like they just turn around circles in and die in. Like, do they like kind of like walk around? I, I guess they don't walk, but they swim around in circles. Like, what? You coming at me, bro? You coming at me? Oh that no, they're pretty of... like lethargic. They don't really do that much. Oh, I thought they fought. <laughs> Only if there's, like, other dudes around. Like, other dude fish, right? Yeah, like, if two dude fish in one bowl, like, the fish will, like, my mom said, if you hit me, then I can hit you, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do fish have so. moms? I don't know. Anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. The topic we're talking about, obviously, at this point, I, I assume anyone knows, but we're talking about uh, dead molds, abandoned molds, uh, shopping molds that used to be a thing and now no longer exist. I know th- th- uh, nowadays they're all still molds around, but there's not many. I know that. Do you have many by you at all? Um, We still have... Out of my city, we used to have four malls when I was growing up. Um, We're down to three uh but one of them is only the one that's like really like half decent um and it's i mean considering like most people don't really want to go to the mall these days like the one mall um it's called aberdeen mall like the the, i think the management does a pretty decent job at keeping like stores and stuff in there but the other ones are like literally the the dead mall aesthetic just straight up (laughs) there's one uh some place in san antonio we used to go to because uh every october they would throw like something called a monster con which is like just like a, a small fest of spooky uh vendor tables so we would sell bo- okay. we would sell books at them but it was really much like in the middle of fucking no wheel in san antonio and most of the shops were long abandoned and it was always pretty sketchy just like selling anything there like at one point the cops came because somebody on the opposite side of the mall got stabbed inside oh my god (laughs) it was not a safe place to sell books and we never sold that many because no one goes to a shopping mall like come out for that right (laughs) yeah because you get stabbed that's what happens Like, I know that that's, like, one of the factors that, like, goes into, like, malls dying is, like, you know, when, you know, random, you know, acts of violence start happening. And then, you know, most people don't want to, like, start up a store in there, so. (laughs) Right. Which, to me, seems like a chicken shit attitude. (laughs) (laughs) I was on the Wikipedia page for Dead Mall. I'm going to it now again. Because there was a quote that made me laugh a lot. So um, there was a shopping mall in uh, Virginia, the state of Virginia, which had operated successfully in the 1970s and 80s. So I'm, I'm reading this directly from Wikipedia. By the 1990s, its best customers, women, began staying away from the mall because they were afraid of the youth who were beginning to go there. People began seeing kids with huge baggy pants and chains hanging off of little belts, and everybody was intimidated, and they would say they were gangs. <laughs> Isn't that so fucked up? <laughs> I mean... It's pretty funny to think that baggy pants is the the cause of the decline of shopping malls. 
You sell pants at malls. It's a it's an item. They will, I know. Yeah, they will probably buy in those baggy pants from the very place they shut down. Well, it's probably like, you know, like suburban moms, I guess, at least in mm-hmm. that era. Yeah. Because they were, you know, you're like a little bit more like pulled away from like cities and stuff. So I feel like suburban moms, maybe to some degree, have some reason to be afraid <laughs> of baggy pants and chains. But I don't know. Like, you know, I grew up with that. The, the baggy pants and the and the chain and the wallet. I mean, I don't really know what kids would have in their wallets, but it was about the chain. The wallet was useless. I had a wallet chain as well, and I recall in my wallet I had only one thing, which was an ID that had an, an alien as the photo, and under the uh, section that said sex, it said yes. That was my claim to fame. Was it like a Spencer's Gifts thing? Oh, like... I don't know. I, someone, <laughs> I found it at school, and I was like, this is mine now. I'm going to be the coolest oh. <laughs> kid in school. And it, it, I wasn't. It, no one was impressed. It has to be a Spencer's Gifts thing. It, it must have be. been. <laughs> that was all I had in the wallet, because I was a child, and children d- don't have money. Yeah, you just have to, like, pretend. Yeah. The, <laughs> the story of uh, Modern Ruins, how, like... What began this uh, interest or possibly obsession with these uh, dead molds with you? Um, well, I was like in my teens, I was always really interested in like abandoned as- insane asylums, like in particular. And there were like a few photographers like back in the day, like, you know, early 2000s that would, you know, go to these places, not just asylums, but just other old buildings and would take pictures of them and, and share the photos online. And like, I just loved that. Um, but then, you know, as the years have progressed and especially with YouTube and stuff, you have more people like they call themselves urbexers that go to these, um, abandoned places and just check them out and take videos and do tours and just share them online. And it's just really cool to see these places, at least for me, because I would, I'm not the sort of person that would dare to just break into an abandoned building. So it's just cool to see in these places that you just kind of drive by on your day to day and just to like actually see what it's like inside and see the history and just see the stuff that was left behind. And I don't know, like it was just like a handful of years ago, I started getting like into malls and I guess it's just, you know, we kind of lived in such a, we live in such a fucked up world now that it's just hard not to just be nostalgic for a time when things were just more happy. And I guess we're just about going to the mall and having fun. And so I stumbled upon, um, there's a YouTube guy, his name is um, Dan Bell, but his YouTube username is This Is Dan Bell, and he has a series called The Dead Mall Series, and so that was, that was my first taste of it, and so basically he just, he doesn't even, he does have urbex videos, but he just goes into malls that are just kind of dead and dying, and like, I mean, if you live in any mid-sized city, you're gonna have one of those, and it was just something like, I don't know, he, he like, scores them to um music called vapor wave which is just kind of like 80s 90s like aesthetic music that's like really distorted like major stoners usually listen to it but he put this music to like score a lot of his dead mall mo- um dead mall videos because there was always like music playing and he didn't want to get like the copyright claims on it and so that just be kind of was the origin the, the origins of the whole dead mall aesthetic and so a lot of like the people who make dead mall videos now will just put that like vaporwave music over it. And it's all like the hardcore, like eighties, nineties, aesthetic colors, like all of that. And I don't know. I just got really addicted to it. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and it makes sense that they would have to put music over like the mall still in operation because like that music would just get that, those videos shut down on oh, YouTube yeah, totally. ASAP. Yeah, Matt. like, I think the original ones that he did were, like, old 70s mall music, but then, like, I guess he found, like, some of the Vaporwave and got some of the, you know, just the artists to, you know, approve, be like, yeah, you can put my song in your video, and it just, like, blew up, and so, yeah, it's just, like, a huge thing, so sometimes if I just want to get really nostalgic, I'll just get a little high and put on some Vaporwave, and it just, you know, I, I feel like I feel like a 12-year-old, like, at the mall again, and it's just great. I regret not looking this up ahead of time because I forgot about it completely until right now. But I used to uh, write to these uh, SoundCloud uploads that will basically like the cassette tapes from an old shopping mall's playlist. Like it had all the old music and even the advertisements. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Dan Bell has some of those in his videos, yeah. Cool. Yeah, those, I don't know what's with, like, th- like even the advertisements will not, like, uh, grading, like, how, like, ads are right now. Like, they'll sk- 
there's a rhythm and it's kind of fun to listen to and... yeah it's got that like old the uh, like 80s cheesiness i don't know what like the commercials in them at that time i don't they were just so cheesy and there was always a jingle and like they always talked like way too perky about buying shit like <laughs> yeah it had that uh <laughs> i guess i would but i now consider the too many cooks vibe <laughs> oh totally yeah <laughs> i um so it's a shopping mall by me that is not the one I mentioned previously that I uh, had to go to to get my uh, my COVID vaccination, and it was mostly uh, dead. Most of the shops were just no empty at this point. But I was baffled and slight, slightly outraged to discover like the main place that is like what's happened nowadays in shopping malls, or just like kiosk uh, a kiosk just dedicated only to to funko pops that seems to be what oh, they fun. sell at shopping malls now just funko pops i don't have it i don't think like in my in my city we don't have any funko pop ones we have like the cell like the cell phone case kiosks there's like a billion of those but um yeah most of the funko pops will be like the, um, in my major mall like there was like a music store that opened up and i remember when it opened everyone was like what the fuck like who's gonna fucking go in there and buy cds but they, it's mostly, it's like half Funko Pops and collector stuff and, you know, just like the shit millennials will sink all their money into. And then, and then like records, because, you know, for some reason we're into records again. Good old vinyls coming back. Yeah. Didn't you know? Yeah, the music purists. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, music purists, but like. <laughs> it's such a pain in the ass to do vinyl. You have to get up constantly. I hate getting up. Oh, I know. Sucks. And it's just like, cause then you get, to, then you have to like buy the stupid IKEA shelves to like store the albums on them so that they like they look like Instagram ready when you post them. <laughs> like it's it's like not even about the music anymore. It's just about like the aesthetic of it. It's about you know? keeping that brand alive. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, when I think about like what my own experience is with malls growing up. I mean, music was mainly my main reason to have to go. Like, I don't know what, sh what type of shops you guys had in Canada, but with us, we had like a uh, Suncoast and FYE and those were the main places we would go to like buy CDs. What did you have? Um, we had God, it's hard to like, cause my city didn't have too much for music stores. I think from what I can remember when I was like a kid, Cause like, you know, I was kind of like poor, so we didn't really buy CDs or anything. And I didn't even really get into music until like I was 12, 13, 14. Um, I used to just buy my music from like Future Shop, which is just kind of like an electronics kind of store, like all around kind of thing. Um, or just like at Walmart or whatever. Um, we also had a department store called Zellers, which is where I would buy a lot of my music when I was like early teens. Um but, like, we had a few music stores, and I remember my later teens, there was, like, one in particular at, um, like, Aberdeen Mall that would always change. Like, it used to be, like, one local music store, and then it changed into a franchise, and then it went back to a local thing, and then it changed to a different franchise. And then eventually it just shut down completely once, you know, like, music went really digital. But, I don't know, that was kind of mostly my thing. We didn't, I didn't, I didn't have any, like, major... Um, music stores that I can remember now unless I went to Vancouver where I, there, you go to the ones we had one or two but now their names are just completely escaping me that's okay I had to I had to go <laughs> I had to google before we began talking both the names that I listed because I could not remember them they saved my life but yeah I had to google them I think with music specifically in my case like my memories will Oh, positive when it comes to going to those music shows, only because like I can remember like my brother like talking about like certain punk bands that like I had no way to listen to, but he would talk like how great they were and how like they were the best bands ever, and, like specifically like say the Misfits, which I had no way to listen to, but then like going to that mall and seeing oh they have Misfit they have Misfit CDs at this place. I have been yeah. told about this band for so long, and now I have a way to listen to them finally. So like when I think about shopping malls, like that's what I tend to zone in on uh, specifically. And also, I when I think about shopping malls, I think about like Dawn of the Dead, which is how can you not think about it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like music was a main thing. I didn't buy too many clothes like in my teens, but I liked going there. Like I remember when I was young, like twelve, thirteen. Um, 
we had a Canada had a store called Le Chateau, which was like a really kind of just like funky women's clothing store. But in the 90s, it was like really hardcore, like edgy stuff. And I remember going in there when I was still young and like I couldn't wear any of it, like the major like Spice Girls style, like platform shoes and stuff like that. And I was just so excited to shop there. But, but then by the time, you know, I was older and would go in there, it was just like the most just the lamest looking stuff because it just kind of really dulled down. And it was just white walls like everything was just so soulless looking like it just lost that edge and then like oh it's le chateau i think recently shut down like last year or something they went bankrupt so good (laughs) (laughs) fuck that place hey canada doesn't have much for retail um you know i don't and i haven't thought about this but like did you and do you have places like hot topic um we don't have a i I don't know. Maybe they might in Vancouver and stuff like that. I don't in my city. Like we've got like old Navy um, garage, like just a lot, you know, just the cheap, just the cheap um, fast fashion kind of clothing. Um, whenever I do go to our mall, like there's, there's still teenagers in there and I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing here? What? You can just go online. What like are I they feel doing? like most teenagers these days, like just want to look like they're nineties anyway. So they're just going to shop at value village. So I'm just like, why are you people here? It's just weird what what do they do I, they i don't know they but they go to a lot there's a few skate shops so okay. they go to those places i guess just to get like the skate kind of clothes i don't know i, I feel so detached from that <laughs> that like <laughs> i don't know what kids do yeah the last time i was at a mall i had to i think we had just stopped to get like a christmas gift for somebody at like at the disney shop they have and i passed mm-hmm. a a, a, ha- a shop dedicated only to hats and i thought i could use a hat lids lids it's yeah lids, right yeah, yeah. yeah. those lids and I thought, baseball caps those are my types of hats i'm like let's see what you guys got and i went in and the issue the thing with me is my head is gigantic and i was disappointed to discover well, not one hat inside lids fit my Everything head was tiny. yeah it was like <laughs> this is a shop full of children not, not do they not me. have funko pops in there i feel like they would have funko pops in there oh i bet you they have funko pops of hats they have to yeah <laughs> it's just like baseball players or some shit like that yeah i've always wanted to be like well, well not a funko pop but a bobblehead I feel yeah. like that would be cool. Like, <laughs> just to be transformed into one? Yeah. yeah. Well, you can get custom ones made, can't you? No, I mean, like, physically transformed. Oh, okay, like, like, okay. Like, to take the soul from my body and put it into a, a toy. I think that would be incredible. I mean, all right. <laughs> Dreams, right? Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> what... I mean, so you've watched a lot of these videos, it sounds like. I mean, do you ever, like, get creeped out at all? Like, do they seem spooky? There are a few that are really spooky. Um, Man, there's, like, there's some where, like, they do go into actual dead malls. And then there's one, there's this weird mall that was kind of, um, I can't remember the name of the mall now. But it was in kind of, like, a, I think it was a Vietnamese kind of area. So there was, like, a Vietnamese area of the city. And so that was kind of what the mall catered to. But just because it was so dead and there's certain parts of the mall that are, like, half the lights are out and shit. And there's just, like, dirt and stuff, like, all over the walls. Like, those are really creepy. And then there is another one. Like, it's the one that I mentioned in my story Uh, rolling acres mall so dan bell has a video of that and it's he goes in after it's it's like closed down and abandoned and stuff but there's just like certain parts of it that are like so creepy because usually when buildings shut down especially in the states um you know you have um copper people who like copper thieves and all that kind of stuff scrappers people who go in and steal all the metal and all that kind of stuff so that's always the first thing that happens there's always a shit ton of graffiti and all that kind of thing and so, like, I do even reference that in the story, like, just some of the graffiti in there that just, I don't know, it's just super creepy to me. So it's just the the deadness, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree. I find, like, empty space like that and also, like, how quiet a building like that becomes mm-hmm. really unsettling. And then just all those other noises that just kind of uproot themselves, right? Like, yeah. that you don't normally think would exist in, in such, like, a, in a mall that you would associate to be filled with people and it's, it's just not to me it's definitely pretty depressing i think just like thinking about all the, these dead buildings like we just grew up with it's like this symbol like life will pass you by no matter what you will not yeah and then the spirit halloween like opens up yeah 
the old bones of the building. <laughs> That's another thing I've always wanted to happen. Feel a spill at Halloween to just open up inside me. <laughs> I mean, eventually I won't need this calcus anymore, so that would be right. that would be cool. Do you in, in Canada? Do you guys get a lot of spill at Halloween's? Or no. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those pop up. Um, I always like. It's always interesting to kind of see like, oh, where it, where it pop, where it's going to come up this year, right? Like. Um, there's like that meme where, you know, shit that shows like the latest abandoned place and then the spirit Halloween over it. Like, I think there was like one over like the white house last year after, you know, whatever the fuck Trump did the last time. Like, you know, I saw one for like only fans and then the spirit Halloween like opens up. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my best, my best example of a uh, spirit Halloween doing that is I was looking at this one job that I hated and then they let me go because I had called in sick. And then, like, two months later, I was driving by the job, and uh, it was now a spiel at Halloween. The business is shut down. And I was like, ha I win. And then I went in and paid too much money to buy things that I did not actually need. Yeah, like, I love going to Spirit Halloween because, like, I'm a major Halloween person. But, like, now it's at the point I'm like, this is all shit. Like, I don't need any of this shit. But I don't, it's just almost exciting, especially if it's like an old place that, you you know, like a blockbuster or something that you go back in there and like, well, this, you know, where the new releases used to be, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> I like to go sometimes like after Halloween just to see like what's on discount now, because they obviously oh, yeah. do not sell most of the shit they have. Yeah. And it's like so overpriced originally, like it's so expensive. It's ridiculous, but people pay it because I guess. I don't know. Rich people, well, mostly rich, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they. Steal yeah, I always it. wondered, like the people, because I was, I always loved Halloween and always wanted to like decorate and have like the funky, like you know, the haunted houses and shit like that. But my mom was like, no, it's a waste of money. But like, it's the animatronic shit. I'm just like the amount that people pay for that stuff, and nobody likes the animatronics. Like people like to just press them in the store, but when you go to a haunted house, like that's not enjoyable. Yeah, I hate the the giant inflatable like spooky monsters. It's just oh, the inflatable ones are the worst. There's nothing there's nothing scary about it. There's there's nothing cool about it. It just looks stupid and they're so overpriced as well. Like how much did you see those giant skeletons that were like all the craze last year? Yeah, the Home the Home Depot skeleton was like three hundred dollars or something, wasn't it? Was that how much it was? I don't know. I think it was like I think they were like three hundred bucks. Yeah, and a shit ton of people bought them. What do you do with it after? You can't just put it in your house. You would have to leave it outside, and then like the yeah, HOA you know, would pretty, get mad. Like massive garage for that shit. Like I just yeah. like I don't I don't I have a carport, so I can't. You know. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, I should find someone who bought one of those skeletons and just like interview them. Like, what did you do after Halloween? I don't yeah, know. No. There are people who bought like more than one too. Like, yeah, must be nice. To have, to have a castle, I guess. I don't know. I know. I feel like if you if you love Halloween that much, like you can commit more and make some of your own decorations. That's what we usually do. We we just like sometimes we'll look up like YouTube videos of how like people make cool things. Like we made a, a cemetery with like just styrofoam and shit like that. Oh yeah, it's not even that hard. No, like it's it not. really isn't. Like, I always do, like, the chicken wire ghosts, or, you know, you just throw up, like, a cross and then throw, you know, like, some blankets and stuff over it. And, like, it's all about lighting. Yeah. Just, like, when you go to Spirit Halloween, just buy a shit ton of black lights. That's all you need. The coolest and thing... Then, like, and the... then, like, the fog machine. Fog machines never yeah. seem to bilk with me. Somehow I always fuck them up, and they just don't do any fog. I don't... Oh, really? It's so complicated. <laughs> The the coolest thing we made was uh, we bought like a like a palette like something you buy like you get like merchandise on like a, yeah why am I describing what a palette is I don't, I don't know uh, <laughs> we we bought a palette well I think we just like took one from a dumpster and we painted it the we painted it uh, black and we set it on the the grass and we like covered it with a fake dilt that we bought and we put like skeleton hands poking out of it. Yeah, the hands coming out and then like the light underneath it, right? Yup, it looks like a gateway to hell. It's awesome and it costs like nothing. I know and I find that those decorations are just a lot more fun to do. Like, you just be more creative with it and just do your like, your own aesthetic. I would love for someone to rent like one of these dead molds and just make it like a spooky haunted attraction in Halloween. 
Oh, I know, right? Like, I mean, one of the major things that, like, people use dead malls for now is, like, movie sets. Like, they used one for Stranger Things. Um, they used one for, what was it, Fear Street, like the recent, the Fear Street Netflix thing. Um, so, like, they, they'll they take sections of these malls and close them down and then just use them for, like, movie sets. But then it's just, like, then they take down the sets, like, right after. Like, why don't they leave that shit up? It's, it's, it's interesting to me that they, like, nothing happens to them at all. You're right. Like, I'm surprised, like, evil businesses don't buy them and re, re, uh, revamp what's the fucking mill? recycle them into different buildings like i don't know like why do they just remain abandoned is that something that you know much about um well i think a lot of it especially for like the big malls like it just costs so much money to keep them running so usually they'll shut down sections of the mall like wall them off entirely um but it's it's just i think it's just a cost factor so instead like it's just too hard to get people to go in there especially once the mall's like at such you know once you're at like 30 percent occupancy like it's really impossible to get people interested to want to like set up shop in there or do anything so a lot of the time you'll get mall spaces utilized you know as doctor's offices or you know military recruitment offices um stuff like that the one mall in my town like part of it they use now is like uh like an e-bus facility like a waiting room facility so it's just kind of like now they try to use them for like different spaces as opposed to just retail mm, that makes sense i uh I, I bet covid fucked a bunch of malls too oh yeah like i it's just i haven't heard too many but i know there's been some that have shut down because of covid obviously yeah um and then and then you know it's uh, I mean, amazon has a lot to do with it too so a lot of these malls get shut down and then they just bulldoze them and turn them into amazon like fulfillment centers so i mean pretty soon like a, that's going to be the only building in, in the planet just I, go to amazon i guess <laughs> oh, fuck i just can't i can't it's just too much it's sometimes. awful it's awful I, I watching some of those videos I was watching before we began talking. I have to say, like it's like the, I, it would make it such a great found footage movie. Do you know of any that have been made about like these people like exploring dead malls? No, I haven't. What the hell? That needs to happen. I mean, soon they got to cater to the aesthetic. Like the the stoned people need some movies to watch. Yeah, I mean, if they made a movie out of that, maybe it would bring back interest in shopping malls. Well, maybe it would just bring interest in breaking into abandoned buildings. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. See, that's the fun. That's the funny thing. Like, so, like the mall that I wrote about, like in my story, like Sahali Mall is is what it, what it is like in in Kamloops, BC, and so like they had like a new grocery store like open up like right during covid but when you go inside there's like literally nothing in there so every time i go in there i snap a few photos like just for the dead mall aesthetic pictures um but there's like one really great like japanese burger restaurant called burger joy in the restaurant or in in the mall and i like i just love going there it's just great so you get all these small little local businesses opening up <laughs> but like i just so certain malls, there's just no hope for them. So it's just kind of sad. Like you got to go in this like, just really sad looking building to like get this burger that you've been craving all day. Like <laughs> it's so sad. It's like walking through a cemetery. You just have mm -hmm. a... and it's just almost like you're there for the spectacle because it's so dead. Yeah. Like that's the weird thing. Like these dead mall enthusiasts. Like when you see them kind of like doing their their videos walking through the malls, and I'm just like wondering what you know some of the other people in there think. Like, <laughs> yeah, especially the employees. Like, look at this jackass just advertising that my job is about the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, what What would be like the oddest or strangest thing you've seen in some of these videos? Anything come to mind? Not really. Like, I think it's just weird. I think one of the things I always often ponder is like the the mall walkers in there, like the senior mall walkers, and um, just. Because a lot in a lot of the interviews that they show of like news footage of like certain malls shutting down is these mall walkers are just like so heartbroken because it's like this place that they've walked in with their girlfriends for like years. And then all of a sudden they don't have that space anymore. And it just must be so weird to like have been, you know, a middle aged woman like in the 90s or something. And then as you get older and older and this is your only like good time that you have with your friends, like all these stores are just shutting down and you're just walking in like this shell of a building 
Like, yeah. They, like, imagine the cast from Clueless getting together to do a photo shoot now in a shopping mall. Yeah, like, mall. in a mall. Like, yeah. It'd be awful. <laughs> I know. It, like, in a way, it makes me sad. Like, I loved Clueless. And me too, now yeah. I'm just kind of like, I have no... Nobody... Like, I, I work in a retail store that's part of a strip mall, which is, like, strip malls are kind of, like, the thing now. Because for whatever reason, like, people just don't want to park in a parking lot and go into a mall full of stores. They want to park in a parking lot and go to one main store and then maybe go to a couple other stores. Like, I, it's just kind of strange to me. Like, it's really not that different, but it's just, like, it just warps with people's minds a little bit. And, like, I, you know, it's just weird. Like, because even me, like, I don't really want to go to the mall. I have I haven't gone to my any of my malls like in a long time so yeah same I have no reason to which I I guess I, I guess I'm probably the problem but, but I don't know I'm not, I don't uh, like I don't like, like going any place mm-hmm. like the last time I went to like our main mall was like at Christmas time and we kind of just ended up there because we we had to get some groceries and there was a new grocery store and we're like let's check out the new grocery store but then we ended up in the food court and it was just so like busy and full of teenagers and I just. I don't know. I just didn't want to be there. It was too crowded. Plus, it was COVID, so like that that kind of factored in. But otherwise, like it's just like, I guess once you hate a certain age in your life, you just don't like crowds anymore. Because I remember being like a teenager and just loving, like just getting a high off of being in a jam packed mall with bags. And yeah, and now that's just like this is just not me anymore. Just going to the mall, walking around, going to the shops, just like looking at things and making fun of them, and just having fun. That that just doesn't seem to exist now. At least not like within my age. At least maybe maybe kids do it now just to be like, hey, you want to go be retro? Probably. I don't know. Like- it makes me wonder if kids, like, you know, they'll see, like, an old-fashioned movie or something. Like, if they'll watch Clueless and then they'll, like, try to go to the mall thinking it's the same thing. And then their mall's, like, it's, like, fucking, like, half the stores are shuttered. Like, just how sad that must be. <laughs> yeah, it's just the kids sitting, like, in the food court cool. while, like, a custodian mops next to them. And that's it. Yeah. Like, I remember when I was a kid, like, our, like the neighborhood I grew up in, you know, it was it was more low-income people. And I remember when, like the main like one of the main department stores in Canada for like so many years was this store called Zellers this department store and so we had a Zellers on on the north shore and then kind of like in the mid 2000s was when Walmart started like really picking up prominence in in Canada and so the Walmart moved out of Sahali Mall and then opened up like their own their own retail space and so Zellers decided like oh we're going to go and compete with Walmart and so they moved up into the old Walmart location in Sahali. And it was just like the people in my neighborhood were just so alienated by that because we had this core department store that was like right in our neighborhood. And then they just went and moved away. And so you didn't have, at least for where I live, like there was nowhere else you could go to buy clothes or housewares and that kind of stuff. And like you had to drive all the way uptown to get it. And so it was just kind of like an alienating thing in my community just to have this store just like completely go because they were trying to compete with Walmart, which like now you're just like fuck, like that's it's you're you're dead. Like, <laughs> there's no way. Do you think there's a chance of the medal like coming back somehow, like shopping malls becoming a thing again? I, I don't know. Like I could see it I being don't... possible just because of the way we sometimes get obsessed with the past and we try bringing shit back. Like I could see it coming back because of something like that. Maybe in, like, a major city, but I think in, like, most cities, probably not. Just, like, I mean, like, we all have, like, a nostalgia factor, but I just think the way people are now, like, Amazon, for one, is just too convenient. And I just think, like, especially some of, like, the really large shopping malls that they kind of built in suburbs and stuff like that. Like, it was just too big of of a plan, and it was just, I think the people who developed those those malls just didn't have the foresight and so maybe you had like a good 10, maybe 20 years of like high traffic and high volume in the mall. And then, but it's just, it, these spaces are just way too big to sustain themselves long term. And so like just watching enough dead mall videos, like you just hear that it's the same story over and over and over. So through, you know, like the ones that opened up in the 70s or the 80s, like it was really great at one point in time. And then somewhere around the 90s things changed and they were just like just struggling to maintain things so I really like I just at least the way that you know people are leaning I guess economically now like people know that's like a mall like that just isn't isn't feasible or practical 
Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Does anyone ever get, like, uh, like arrested in these videos or, like, uh, chased? Um, like, in some of the abandoned ones, yes. I've never seen ones where people come across, you know, like criminals or anything in yeah. like the abandoned videos um usually in the ones where like a security will come across someone filming inside the mall they just they just escort them out so it's not really like any like major scene yeah i i feel like if i i don't think i have the guts to break into a, a dead mall at all what, you, no you, i definitely yeah. couldn't I, don't I wouldn't want to breathe in the black mold anyway. Like, fuck. It's just not worth it. That's a good point. I mean, what... what... Like, somebody somebody else will do it. <laughs> and I'll just watch it on YouTube safely in my home. Mm-hmm. Mold-free, I assume. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, was there anything else about uh, dead molds you wanted to uh, touch upon? I don't know. Like, I just... I There's part of me that definitely misses malls and, like... I feel like being a teenager in the 90s was probably, it was probably like peak. And I, I kind of, like, I just missed that because I was like a teenager in the early 2000s. So, like, malls were okay, but that was when things were starting to, like, were a little bit on the decline. And you started to see, it's like, why the fuck isn't this mall, like, updating things, you know? I remember having those thoughts and be like, why are all the malls in my city? Why do they all look like shit? And now, like, after, you know, seeing enough dead mall videos, I'm like, whoa, it was actually all the malls. They were all falling apart. You, you know? watch movies like Clueless, then you would go to the mall and like it's not the same. It's not the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like why is my why is my city shitty? Like why isn't it cool? You know, like yeah, why isn't like the biggest like uh like uh, why isn't every kid in my school at this shopping mall right now? And why yeah, are we exactly. not gossiping? It wasn't happening. Yeah. Or, like, you know, like, Mall Rats the movie. Like, yes. the same thing. Because yeah. I was thinking you were talking about, like, the women who were, like, scared of all the teenagers. Like, that was, like, a... Wasn't that, like, an epidemic at one point? Like, at least in American culture? To be honest... Concept... To be honest, I'm still... Uh, till, I'm, I'm till if I have teenagers now. Just because <laughs> they just... I think they would make fun of me if they saw me. And I don't... I try not to be. I try to, like, at least stay in touch and, like, know what's going on. Because yeah. the last thing I want is to be one of those parents, you know, like when Columbine happened and all the parents were like, it's the music they're listening to. It's the it's the way they're dressing, you know, like I just I don't I don't want to be that parent. I don't totally like, like I don't I'm not afraid of them like like killing me. I just I understand teenagers will really mean people and <laughs> I'm really sensitive. So I, try I mean, and... they're already all over the Internet, like stalking your like Twitter feed. So that is true. I'm sure like every so often, every so often I'll have some like random person like follow me or something on twitter i'll, I'll engage in a discussion and then they'll like whoa 2006 which was like when i started my twitter profile and they'll be like what the fuck that's like so long ago <laughs> 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 you know? it wasn't I even alive I feel, like, I feel so targeted by that and I, it's just like <laughs> alienating i'm like leave me alone like why don't they think i'm cool for that because i was one of the like og twitter people you know yeah <laughs> Uh, kids will kill us all, I think, is the message of this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I mean, there's going to come a time where kids won't even know what, like, shopping malls are, right? Maybe that's now. No. I don't like, know. Like, they already don't know what Blockbuster is. Yeah. There's that whole... With the, did you watch the Blockbuster documentary on, on no, Netflix? No, I didn't. Yeah, it was like this whole... Thing. Reminiscing over it and be like, oh, my kids are never going to experience the joy that was Blockbuster, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh, that that's true though. I mean, like I had to explain to uh, my parent old son recently. Like, you actually had to go and rent movies, and he was like, "Why?" <laughs> I was like, "I, I don't know." <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, there's obviously a part of me that's still like really fond of that and stuff, but I'm just like, no, it's way easier now. Like, just yeah. to shut my kids up, just put up some Netflix. You know? Yeah. I remember my daughter saying because my my parents don't have like internet or anything like that so whenever they go there she's like i don't know like when we have to watch tv like you just watch what's on the tv yeah and you just have to like just watch it i'm like yep and it has camille yep. schultz yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well i think this has been a pretty good conversation about dead mobs oh yeah yeah 
if only one um you know i'll i'll talk about this in the intro and outro as well but anyone interested in uh exploring the topic even further you have a silly and lost contact which is available to pre order now or maybe it's available to buy uh, just to, to, to read now depending on when this episode goes live i'm not positive yet but yeah it's the i will have a, a link in the show notes for anyone uh, interested do you have anything else you wanted to talk about concerning the uh the story i have in the book um well i guess it, you know it has a lot to do with what we've talked about and just about you know, growing up, I guess, as a millennial and living in this fucking hellscape that we're in right now, uh, it's kind of soul sucking and just crippling. And so that's basically what my story is about. You grow up and you get married and you think everything's going to be great and you have kids and then you just want to break into some dead malls. <laughs> how, can, how can people find you online? Um, so I have my website, RebeccaJonesHow.com. I'm on Twitter, which is at rjoneshow.com, and I'm also on TikTok and Instagram, Rebecca Jones How. And you began that Twitter account when? In 2006. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> And that was Rebecca Jones Howe talking about uh, abandoned shopping malls to promote a new anthology, Lost Contact. Go buy it now, any place you buy books. Don't buy it from Amazon, because Amazon is a piece of shit and it's evil. So any other place, um, I'll have a link to my website in the show notes. Buy it from the website. That would be cool. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Goodbye.